President Trump doubled down on an America First agenda Tuesday at the United Nations, despite being surrounded by an audience of world leaders. In a speech addressing the UN General Assembly, the president issued a warning to other countries, saying, quote, the U.S. will always choose independence and cooperation over global governance, control and domination. CBS News White House correspondent Weijia Zhang is at the U.N. with the latest. At times, President Trump's promise of America first sounded more like America alone during his speech at the United Nations. We reject the ideology of globalism and we embrace the doctrine of patriotism. The president reserved his most stern rhetoric for Iran, scolding the regime as he forcefully stood by his decision to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. Iran's leaders plunder the nation's resources to enrich themselves and to spread mayhem. Mr. Trump commended North Korea for its willingness to negotiate a deal to denuclearize. I would like to thank Chairman Kim for his courage and for the steps he has taken, though much work remains to be done. A stark contrast to what he said during last year's speech. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. During the liveliest part of President Trump's speech today, he drew ridicule when he boasted about what he's done for the U.S. My administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. Weijia Zhang joins me now from the United Nations here in New York. Weijia, President Trump put his America First policies at the forefront of his remarks Tuesday. This has been the focus of a lot of critics, but is this kind of rhetoric actually surprising from this president? Well, it's certainly exactly what we hear when we attend uh, Trump campaign rallies, and he is committed to making America great again, America first. But remember, this is not that setting. This is a massive world stage uh, where the spirit of the United Nations is really cooperating together and this idea of globalism to work toward the same goals. In fact, just about an hour before uh, President Trump's address, the UN Secretary General uh, uh, spoke to the General Assembly and said that global cooperation is the world's best hope. And then you have the president saying that he is committed to uh, cooperating with other countries, but he rejects the ideology of globalism and embraces patriotism uh, as though the two are uh, mutually exclusive. And so to hear the president talk about that here is a little bit different from hearing it at a campaign rally or or uh, at the White House, where we would expect to hear it. And we, we know that President Xi Jinping of China was not in attendance today, and this comes right. as the trade war wages on, with the U.S. announcing tariffs on roughly $200 billion of Chinese imports last week. Did the president address these escalating tensions with China? Absolutely. And he used the same sort of language that we've been hearing, that he's been using to uh, to defend his strategy uh, to bring China to a level playing field, as he says, by implementing uh, new tariffs, even though China has responded each time. But he says the U.S. will not be abused as it has for decades and it will not be taken advantage of uh, and that he's really looking out for the American people when he issues these tariffs that are leading to an all-out trade war uh, because China has retaliated during the last round and uh, the administration is threatening even more. And Weijia, the president also focused on North Korea Tuesday, didn't he? I mean, while he praised Kim Jong-un, right. he said sanctions needed to remain in place until denuclearization occurs. Could the president's tone be an indication that a second summit between the two leaders could happen soon. I mean, he has said as much. Right. Not just his tone, but his very own words, that he believes a second summit will happen in the not-too-distant future. He hasn't talked about any dates or possible locations, only saying that will, it will likely not be Singapore and it will be somewhere else. And so he seems very optimistic about meeting again with Kim Jong-un. And as you mentioned, he praised Kim during his speech, thanking him uh, for his courage, you know, for coming up to the and, and his willingness to negotiate with 
with the U.S. on a deal to denuclearize. So uh, as far as the president is concerned, he is forging forward and he believes Kim is as well. Right. And, and we, don't, we are exactly six weeks away from the midterms. So is this sort of America first rhetoric part of the Trump administration's plan ahead of November? Absolutely. I mean, this is what got President Trump elected, and the administration believes it is what will keep Republicans uh, in control and at least very competitive. And, you know, President Trump recently has started saying that a vote for a Republican in November is a vote for me because they will protect my policies and my agenda, which, again, are all uh, fueled by this mantra of America first. And so uh, it's not surprising that he said it here, even though the audience was uh, the United Nations. Of course, he knows who's watching. He knows his supporters are watching, and, and I think he was talking to them as well. Indeed. Weijia Zhang at the UN. Thank you. Sure.